Hi guys, welcome back to my Elixir Phoenix 1.3 tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about contexts inside of Phoenix 1.3. The application that we're going to be building today will be nowhere near actually complete. The reason we're building it is to show what the contexts are and how they can be useful inside of a Phoenix application. Our Phoenix application is going to be a schedule style application. We can think of our models like this. We have users, companies, schedules, and shifts. Our users have an email name and password field. Companies have a user and schedule field. Their schedule has a name and shift field. Our shift has a user start time and end time field. Our user has many companies. So in other words, our users can belong to multiple different companies and they can have multiple different shifts. A company can have many users, but it can only have one single schedule. Our schedule can contain many shifts and our shift can have many users. Now this will make a bit more sense when we actually build out the application. Our app will just be called scheduler, so I'll run mixphx.new. While our app is building, let's talk about our HTML generator. One of the new generators inside of Phoenix 1.3 is phx.gen. HTML, and this also corresponds with the phx.gen.json. The format for this is the context name, then you have the singular resource name, then the plural resource name, and then you put in the attributes followed by their types. Our context is basically the domain with which our data is contained in. So for instance, if you want to create a context called accounts, you could do that, and then you could put in a user called user as well as a user called admin. So you'd have two different schemas inside of accounts. Our application was created, so now I'll just run mix ecto.create to create the database. The first command that we want to run is mix phx.gen.html. Our context will be called accounts, and then our resource name will be called user, and the plural name will be users. Then we'll have an email, which will be a string, and it will be unique. That way, if a user puts in the same email as somebody who's already registered, we will reject that email. And then we'll have a name, which is a string, and a password, which is also a string. When you run the command, you can see that it creates a bunch of files as well as injects into some of these files. And then it tells you that it wants you to add this line to your router file. So we just put it here underneath of our get index page controller index. Here's the context that was actually built. You can see now we have this new folder called accounts and inside of accounts we have an accounts ex file and a user ex file. Our user ex file holds our schema and this has our fields inside of it so email name and password as well as the timestamps and it has a change set function. This is a function that allows us to basically validate the information as it's being passed in through our external application. This accounts file on the other hand is like like a layer that sits on top of our database. You can see that it has a bunch of interesting functions. For instance, list users, get user, create user, update user, delete user, and change user. So rather than just blindly calling our repository like we did in Phoenix 1.2, we can use this layer to call directly for our users instead. We can also look at the migration that was made. This will be called a date followed by createusers.ex and it will be inside of priv repo migrations. We'll have this change function. This is the function that actually gets acted on the SQL database. And we're going to create a table called users with email, name, and password, as well as our timestamps. And at the bottom, it will have a create unique index to specify that our email should be unique. Before we run our server, we want to make sure to run mix ecto migrate to migrate our users table to our database. And then we can run mix phx.server to run our server. If we navigate to localhost 4000s backslash users, we get this whole listing users page and we can create a new user by clicking new user. And we get these boxes, which allow us to type in the different fields. So now I've created a user called Jack who has an email that's completely incorrect. We can make it so that this email could be validated and has to be a certain syntax by changing our change set function. So we just add this validate format function. We specify that we want to do it on our email and then we put a regex string in here followed by a message that will kick back and say please input a valid email if the user inputs a incorrect email. So now if I go and I delete this user and then recreate it using the same exact stuff from before it should kick back and say that we have an error. Something went wrong. Please check the errors below. Please input a valid email. All right, so now that we have our users, we want to kill our server and start to implement our shifts. And to create our shifts, we just type in mix phx.gen.html schedule shift 
shifts. And then we put in our user ID. We say it references our users. And then we have our start time, which is a date time, and our end time, which is also a date time. Again, we'll get back this add resources to your browser scope. First, I'll add our resources shift into our router. And then you can see here that our schedule folder was created. And inside of it is a schedule EX file and then a shift EX file, which has our schema inside of it and our change set function as well. We also have a new migration. And this has a change function with our new database table. We do want to edit this that way a shift cannot be created if it doesn't reference a user and we can go into our shift ex file and add our user id to our cast and validate required functions inside of our change set like this we want to migrate our table to our database and then we want to start our server again so if we reload our users you'll see that we have our users still here but we can also go to shifts and now we can create a new shift and we get these timestamp fields that we can change and if i hit submit here it should throw back an error because we're not referencing a user id now because our user id is mandatory we kind of need to add that to our form we can do that by going to our templates shift and then form.html.eex and then adding a user ID field. The best way to do it is just to take one of the other user fields in here, copy and paste it, and just edit the embedded elixir to match what you want. So rather than a date time select, we want to have a number input and we want it to reference user ID rather than end time or start time. But we want to go to user index.html.eex and make it so that our user ID shows up in here as well. So all I did was add a new TH with ID in it. And then under this whole for user inside of users i added user.id so now if we go to our users you can see here that the id is now listed inside of our table and we can go back to our shifts and create a shift for that user let's just say the shift is going to last a year we'll put in the user id of two now we have a shift that was created for that user so now we want to make our scheduling data structure so we type in mix thx.gen.html put in the context that we want which is schedule and then we type in scheduling and schedulings and then we put in our name of type string and this will generate all of our files again and as well give us our resource that we want to put in our router so here I've put our resource into our router and you'll see now that inside of our schedule context folder we now have a scheduling file which has our schema for schedulings inside of it and our change set for scheduling again we also got a migrations file that was created we do want to modify our migrations. First, we want to make sure that our name is never null. We do this like we did before by adding our null false option. We also want to alter our shifts table so that it references our schedulings. The easiest way to do this is to add a field called schedule ID, and we can say that this references our scheduling table and then we also want this not to be false as well so this is actually just adding a new column to our shifts table called schedule id which will reference back to our scheduling and because we're adding a new field to our shifts table we also want to add that field into our shifts schema and we also want to add it to our change set function inside of cast and validated required so our migration is failing so we want to go and drop our database and my database is called scheduler underscore dev so i'll just drop this and we'll rebuild it from scratch we can just run mix ecto create and then we can run our migration with mix ecto migrate and this will use all of our migrations to rebuild the tables inside of our database so we want to fire up our server again and we want to create a new user and i'll just put in the old user that we had before but of course creating a shift will not work because we do not have our schedule id so we need to expose that and we can just add a form element like we did with our user id for our schedule ID. We also want to go into our scheduling index.html.eex and expose the scheduling ID. And we can do this just simply by copying and pasting a new TH with ID in it and a new TD with our embedded elixir of scheduling.id. So we can create our new scheduling and we can see here that night shift has ID one, create a new shift. We can give this to user one on schedule one and now the shift works. So finally, we want to make our company data structure, our context Will just be called companies our actual schema will be called company and companies and then the field will be name string and again we want to add this to our router so that we can actually see our company's html and we also want to edit our migrations so to make this work we want to create a new table and we're going to call it companies users so like with any of our changes we just add create table and then do the first field we want is called company id and this will reference our company's table we also want 
want this field to not be null. Then we want to add our user ID. So this references our users. And of course, this will also not be null. And then finally, we want to add a relationship, which will be a string that is not null. And then we want to make sure that our company's users, company ID and user ID are unique. So we add this unique index function. We also want to make sure that each company only has one scheduling. So we want to alter our schedulings table to have a company ID which references our company's table and is also not null. We also want to create our company's users schema inside of our company's context. So we create a file called companiesusers.ex and this module will be called schedule.companies.companiesusers. We also want to use our ecto.schema, import our ecto.change set, an alias scheduler companies, companies users, schedule companies, companies company, and schedule accounts user. And then we'll create a default user relationship and we'll call it member and then we'll create our schema which will have companies users and it has one company and also has one user and then we also have our field relationship which is a string and the default is our default user relationship and then we want to create our change set function and this will use our cast our validation required for companies user and relationship and we'll have validate inclusion and this will add our variable of default relationship and then unique constant on company and we'll give it our name of companies users index so now we want to jump into our company schema and we want to add many to many relationship between the company schema and our user so we put in many to many and then we add our user field and we specify that the user is connected to scheduler accounts user and then we're going to join this through our scheduler companies companies users and for our users we want to add our companies and say that they have many companies so for user we add many to many and then the company field and then we say the company is connected to scheduler companies company and then we are joining this through our schedule companies companies users we also want to go into our scheduling and make sure that it belongs to a company and we do this by putting in belongs to company and then put in the module that we want to connect it to so you can try to run ecto migrate but i guarantee it's going to fail so we want to drop our database again and then we want to create our database from scratch i did get a minor error for our migration this parenthesis should be on the outside here oh yes and nothing also needs to be an atom then i had two instances where my nothing atom was actually just nothing so you want to make sure that these are atoms. Our migration should be successful and we can run our server. And we've created our new user. So if we try to create our scheduling, we're going to run into a snag because we do not have our company ID. So we want to add a company ID form value into our scheduling form.html.eex file. And we also want to expose our ID inside of our company index.html.eex file, like so. So now if we go to companies, our generic company should be number one. So we did miss one tiny thing. We forgot to put our company ID into our change set function in our schedulings file. Now we should be able to create our scheduling and we have, so night shift was created and this is ID seven. Now we can create a new shift for our user. We'll just make it from January to February and we'll add it to user one and schedule seven. And you can see now all of this works properly. So I know this was a bit of a quote unquote boring tutorial. It was fairly dry. I just wanted to show you guys how context can be pretty useful inside of Phoenix. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means downvote it as much as you'd like. Have a good night, guys.